Egypt is responsible for having one of the largest and most complex pantheons of gods of any civilization from the ancient world. And over the course of dynastic Egyptian history, hundreds of gods and goddesses were worshipped. The characteristics of individual gods could be hard to pin down. Most had a principal association and form as the apparition manifested in the sky over a very long period of time. But these could change over time as gods rose and fell and evolved in ways that correspond to developments in Egyptian society, as an assimilation of thought occurred throughout the ages. Wait till you hear this. Osiris, god of the underworld and one of Egypt's most important deities. He symbolised death, resurrection and the cycle of Nile floods that Egypt relied on for agricultural fertility. According to the myth, Osiris was a king of Egypt who was murdered and dismembered by his brother Set. His wife, Isis, reassembled his body and resurrected him, allowing him to conceive a son, the god Horus. Could the murder of Osiris have been a manifestation of plasmatic aurora? Witnessed by the people who would come to describe the events in this way, Osiris once stood alone before being attacked and put back together. It's a manifestation in the sky. Isis comes into existence here, and this god has become synonymous with love across the whole world. The origins of Isis are obscure. Unlike many gods, she can't be tied down to a specific town, and there are no certain mentions of her in the earliest Egyptian literatures. Over time she grew in importance, eventually becoming the most important goddess in the pantheon. As the devoted wife who resurrected Osiris after his murder and raised their son, Horus, Isis embodied the traditional Egyptian virtues of a wife and mother. From these perceptions, epiphanies would occur on the ground as the witnesses try to make sense of these intense displays. As the wife of the god of the underworld, Isis was one of the main deities concerned with rites for the dead. Isis acted as a divine mourner and her maternal care was often depicted as extending to the dead in the underworld. Isis was one of the last of the gods and goddesses from dynastic Egyptian times to still be worshipped into the Greco-Roman era. And it was during the Greco-Roman period that she was identified with the Greek goddess Aphrodite and her cult spread as far west as the United Kingdom and as far east as Afghanistan. It is also widely believed that depictions of Isis with the infant Horus influenced the Christian imagery of Mary with the infant Jesus. Depicted as a long-sighted high-flying falcon, Horus was a sky god associated with war and hunting. He was also the embodiment of the divine kingship, and in some eras, the reigning king was also considered to be a manifestation of Horus. According to the Osiris myth, Horus was the son of Isis and Osiris, magically conceived after the murder of Osiris by his brother Set. Horus was raised to avenge his father's murder. One famous tradition holds that Horus lost his eye in a fight with Set but his eye was magically healed by the god Thought. Because the right and left eye of Horus were associated, respectively, with the sun and moon, the loss and restoration of Horus's left eye gave a mythical explanation for the phases of the moon. The gods of Egypt are the result of a documented account of manifestations in the sky, first documented in the petroglyph record before assimilating the stories with the oral traditions of storytelling. The true events become lost, but the perceptions of the ancient observers reach us today. As we attempt to decipher all ancient accounts in the Squatter Man project, but what do you guys think about the gods of Egypt? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.